So this is World Creator that I talked about last week. So world-creator.com is the website. And the website is very informative to give you a good rundown on the software itself. There's a lot of great little pop-up windows that will explain a little bit more in detail what really makes this a great um, software. Uh, for me, right away, the interaction with it, the running off the CPU and having real time, uh, basically, you don't even have to hit render, is pretty amazing. Uh, you can go through the features right here for the terrain, landscape, simulating. They have a great tutorial page that breaks everything up into very bite-sized um, areas. I will say that there's a little bit of an update that they've been doing since World Creator 1 and 2 and then this recent version. Um, these are really helpful for height maps uh, in order to bring in your own height maps from uh, various sources. And then they also, through the community tab, there's a lot more access to videos through there. Like the Vimeo one has different tutorials on it than what you get off the main page of the World Creator site. Um, and these are nice because they're in much more smaller chunks, like little two-minute tips and tricks. And then if you go to the YouTube uh, that is linked through World Creator, they have some newer ones that aren't on the website that show, again, with these little little tips and tricks. Uh, and you can also see the date at which they were uh, created, which is really useful. So the newest are on top and the older are on the bottom. And then here we have, they have uh, documentation that comes with the software as well. Um, and this is useful because there are areas in the two tutorials that they may not mention a few things and you can search in here within the PDF uh, documentation file that can kind of give you a little bit more of a granular uh, information in terms of how to use something. There's great pictures within everything so it's very very straightforward. I feel like you know if you just open up the program, start messing around, have an issue with it, look to these sources to fill in more info then you're pretty much good to go so this is the program this is world creator so it's a really clean interface here's the uh, standard uh, terrain that comes in you can navigate with uh, your right and middle mouse button hit F to zoom back in and on the left hand panel new project load project save save as uh, sync tool, this is used more for Unity and Unreal uh, capabilities. Toggle heat maps, these are uh, masks that you can help to create your elements. And then the terrain info, that is basically really good. If you scroll over your terrain, you'll see an update for the X and Y positional data and then the elevation of your, your map of your uh, terrain, which can be really useful especially when you're trying to add certain filters at a later stage that you can just turn this on and click uh, anywhere. And then you have the minimum and the maximum height value for your terrain and then the range. Uh, this is a toggle mannequin. I have not used this yet. Toggle camp compass. You can basically know north uh, as you rotate around your object. So that's the north side of your object. Uh, wireframe. This, as you zoom in, you will get an up res of your terrain to see the actual resolution, so it's view dependent. Uh, these are just toggle filters, so basically that is so you can visualize the actual filters you've applied, and then the textures, objects, and then details. So it's a nice way to turn it on and off. Last one here is to view uh, topographic, it could be useful. And uh, this last one is take screenshot. Now this is something that I actually noticed that was a pain in the tutorials. It didn't say, but what you have to do is file save as your project first in order for the screenshots to go into a folder. Um, this kind of really messed me up for a little bit. I kept hitting screenshots. There was no documentation at first. And then here you can see I created a test one and then it automatically generated those three folders. There's a test one, you know, actual extension for World Creator, and then the 
second folder is screenshots and there you can see all the screenshots I was taking weren't showing up anywhere but once I did a file save as they all popped into that folder so little things like that on the right here you can see these are the quick ways to toggle through the use you know if you hover over it'll tell you what it is so this is your surface tab textures scenes areas and then post export out and then your options so here you have surface and under surface base and filters those are the two tabs uh, any question mark that you see if you click it it'll give you documentation on the element that you wanted to use and then filters we'll get to that in a second so this is all the parameters within base that you can change um, there's a lot of interesting things here the uh, fractal generator property you can regenerate the fractal so you can just keep cycling through by adding uh, you know a different seed and then basically you can hit the R to return now the terrain size in meters the size is locked right now so there'll be a square uh, right now we have a 4k size and you can change it to any width or length that you want right now we're at 2k 1k and then you know and then you can bring it back up to 4k now you can uncheck the size locked and you can do a non-square version so right now we have 2k by 4k which is kind of nice most of the other programs you have to stay within a square range so then check it back on if you want to make sure you keep the uh, aspect ratio together so precision is right now in meters so we're doing a 4k resolution by one meter um, and basically you can change that precision layer as needed now soil is the depth of your terrain this is just for visualization but you can see the various layers for how deep your uh, terrain is and then if you uncheck soil it'll basically just show your ground plane with the displacement on it but no thickness and what I do like is from one of the two tutorials if you just lower your depth to one keep soil checked on you'll get that indication of the thickness of the height of your terrain so far so I really like that in terms of interaction uh, just to kind of see the overall height as we're coming across the terrain as a visualization like once again when you export out this geo you won't get that block bottom but it is useful so the custom base shape it's an editing capability on this uh, the base terrain so you have a lot of selection tools and you select any one of these diamonds you can push and pull kind of like what you would do in Maya with the Maya tools is now you can just kind of you're like you're pulling verts basically on the plane and you have different selection tools you have a, a more circle radius that you can expand and grab a larger area so this is in a way like soft select within Maya and then you can do a square so if you just change the overall width and length of what you're selecting now you can see I'm grabbing that square region of points and then you can change the fall off of your tool and there's other parameters of flattening basically you know entire recontrol points so different kind of ways that you can edit the shape you know if you wanted to custom base it and turn that off now there is a, a seamless tab so you can basically have a seamless texture that you know if you go on and uh, expand out it won't show any seams apparently then the uh, fractal noise parameters properties will show you the the height factor of your terrain and then the fractal noise strength per step is a major part of world creator it takes a little getting used to but it is dependent upon the resolution that your 
terrain is sized at with the precision level of the meters. So if you think about it, each of these strength steps are levels of your object. So if you think about right now, like uh, step one is affecting the whole grid of the terrain, so that has major implications on it. And then as you keep stepping up, it's levels of detail. So in that sense, uh, finer and finer detail parameters as you get to the higher strength values. So the top one, like 10, is really like a fine adjustment over your terrain, whereas step one really gave you a massive gross change upon the surface structure. But they all correlate together. So you really have to be careful in terms of how you're going to organize these level strengths. But if you can see here, as you start to mess with things, it can be very interesting. Like this now has much more of a smaller feel, or like the surface of a moon. So this could be, a, you know, effectively you designing uh, like a ground plane, a little piece of soil. But now you can see as we've lowered some of these, now the actual terrain looks blurry. So again, this le level strength is very important in terms of how you move these sliders uh, in conjunction with one another. And the amount of these level strengths, the number of steps, again, is dependent upon the resolution of your file. And you can always just reset back to the default um, levels. So it's really nice. There's like mini little undos within here to really help you with everything that you're doing. So filters, this is really where, you know, a lot of the powerhouse, you can basically add a new layer. So this is like in Photoshop, adding a new layer, and now you're adding a filter to that new layer. And this is the pop-up for all the filters. So really good documentation where you can see what your landscape would look with each of these filters applied. So you get a little visualization for what's going on in a write-up. Uh, and it's just really selecting through and grabbing whatever you want for these filters. And the only thing I'd say that's important, it's all about how you stack these filters together because they basically add to each other in the stack. So they're relational in that sense. So the erosions are really strong, really great to see. Um, I would just say try any and all of these and start messing with them and really see how they work in conjunction. So now you can see I've added a terrace smooth to layer base. And then if you check and uncheck, that actually is turning on and off that terrace smooth because you can see all the parameters going away. And then general strength, if you think about like Photoshop, is like opacity. It's the level of how much that strength is actually being applied. And then basically you can add another layer under the filter layer. So multiple layers with different filters applied. Um, let's just add another one here. and then just randomly pick something. Okay, alien cliffs, cratered cliffs. And you can see now like how it's being affected in the general strength we can add or lessen and all the various tweaking that you can do. But you can see they're stacked next to each other and it's activated when you click it so it's blue. And then now if you want, like I said, the layering property of it is important. So Terrace smooth is first, and then cratered, cratered cliffs is on top of it. So what you can do is, if you don't like it, if you select it in those little arrows, you can switch which one is out front of the other. So it's very easy to quickly move these filters forward or backward in terms of your stacking order of your elements. And again, you just you have something to say. This is all real time. Everything that you're doing, you're seeing what you're getting. There's no rendering. 
Um, this is what I really like about World Creator is it's very immediate. Now we've added another layer here, so we can call this base two. So now this is on top of base one. We'll add a filter to that. And maybe do terrace. So now we've added that terrace cliff. So now let's add another. Let's maybe use an erosion, fluvial. And there you go. So now we've got two layers. I'm on base two, and then now I'm on base one. So you can see how you switch between the layers, and you have access to those filters that you've added to those layers. Now the checkbox, you can easily turn off a layer, which the filters that are part of that layer. So right now I'm still on base one, so nothing's happening because base one is turned off. But if I go back and go to base two, and click between these various filters, you can turn off each filter individually so you can really visualize quickly what a filter is doing to your uh, terrain. And you can see all these things are being turned on and off and it's immediate on my laptop. So we're getting instant feedback for everything that's going on here. Rotate, zoom in and out. There's no lag. Turn things back on, up the strength, anything like that. You get just immediate feedback on the size that you're doing. So then now that everything, like I said, is based on this terrain's size in meters, you can you have these filters applied. They're live. You can increase or decrease the size of your terrain. Click on the gearbox and go into general your generator properties, you can increase the resolution that you can output out these maps. So it's very easy to change things on the fly, increase, you know, 8K. Uh, I think the max is 16K. And you can actually take it down to 2K. So you, again, everything is very fluid. There's, there's no lag see here you're just dynamically seeing the terrain change based on the max resolution that you can generate so 5,000 you can up it everything is live there so like everything that's applied to your texture now the only thing is when you increase this the precision you need to make sure correlates to the amount of the size of your terrain so that that part takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. And here you can see, like we've upped it. We have a 10,000 by 10,000 uh, terrain right now. So this is probably a good point where we can stop for now and I'll go over some of the other capabilities within the program uh, in a part two session. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of an intro into World Creator.